Hi, welcome to the whiteboard briefings presented by me, Ian Clark. Um, this briefing is going to be about roundabouts. The roundabout briefings, the whiteboard briefings are in two sections. What I mean, this section is going to be about observation and planning, looking when to go, when not to go, things like this. There is another briefing on roundabouts, which is to do with procedures. That means it's more about lane markings, which lane to be in, which lane not to be in, when to signal, when not to signal. That's another briefing. So this briefing here is more to do with the observation and planning. So question, first question is, what is the point of a roundabout? What's the purpose? What's the intention? Why do planners put in a roundabout? Well, the intention of a roundabout is to slow traffic down where roads meet, to keep traffic moving. It's important to bear that in mind. It's not there to stop traffic. The only time it really stops is rush hour. When there's such a mass of traffic, you can't move. But during the working day, more often than not, um, you can keep moving. So that's the first thing to understand is roundabouts are there to help you keep moving. Um, so the thing we'll start off with is, because I know roundabouts can be quite intimidating. Um, and some people, when they come to them, they just see a blur. So let's just try and deal with that side of things. It's like keep calm and carry on driving. Uh, so just for the sake of the presentation, we'll talk about coming, approaching in this lane and going straight ahead. We could deal with anything. We'll just talk about going straight ahead. Um, that would just be the easiest way to approach it. So, first question is, which gear would you normally approach a roundabout in? Well, I teach my students, generally speaking, the majority of the time in built up areas, if it's relatively clear, then it's going to be second gear. Yep, it can vary. It could be first gear if it's stacked out and it's queuing, then go into first. Or it's a huge roundabout, usually on the outskirts of towns and cities. Size of football pitch is massive. Then you might want third gear. But for my car, which is a, a golf that I teach in at the moment, approach a diesel golf, then approaching in second gear is the gear that works. So approaching in second gear nice and early. When I say nice and early, don't try and do everything at the last second. In other words, try and get into gear a bit late. Get yourself into second gear early. The more experience you get, you can get your gears a bit later. But to make things easier, just get into gear, second gear on the approach so you're organized. The last thing you want is to do is pressurize yourself. There's enough pressure anyway. So get into second gear on the approach. The next thing to consider is the observation side. So as I've said, we're going to go straight ahead. Now, I've just got a whiteboard, but try and appreciate the things that could affect your observation. What I mean is, if you've got buildings set way, way back, then your observation will be easier because you'll be able to see uh, things, vehicles, traffic, whatever, a little bit earlier. The last thing to do is try and look as you arrive at the mouth of the roundabout. You should be looking as early as possible and analysing the traffic at the roundabout. Um, so you approach, what you do is eliminate the vehicles that are not relevant. So what I mean by that is when you approach, I would say to you, this car here, I would eliminate that. In other words, I say to my students back here, I say, forget that car, because guess what? By the time you get there, that vehicle will be gone. Sounds a bit, it's time and space. So if you look early, you can analyze and give yourself the time so you've got the space. Some people just see a blur when they approach. The thing is to try and eliminate the vehicles that won't be there by the time you get there. That's the first thing. So get your gear on the approach, nice and early, second normally. Eliminate the vehicles that aren't relevant. You'll need your instructor to help you. I mean, I, as I've said, I'll say, forget that vehicle, forget this van, forget that truck, because it won't be there by the time you get there. Fine. So that's the first thing. 
The next thing is when you arrive at the mouth of the roundabout, you can go in a vehicle's slipstream. So let me explain. So a slipstream, this is like being back at high school with a teacher, uh, but a slipstream is we have a lorry going ahead and then the, the truck is moving, the air, here we go, is being displaced because the lorry is pushing it out the way and the next vehicle behind it, just the end of the lorry, will go in this other lorry slipstream because there's less air resistance. Uh, so they use less fuel. Not a good idea because they're too close. But that's what lorries tend to do, large vehicles particularly, go in another vehicle slipstream. So in terms of your driving and getting round a roundabout, because it's obviously easier to keep the, the vehicle, your vehicle moving, keep the momentum. Because uh, once you've stopped, which is fine, but once you've stopped, you're starting from cold, you're starting from scratch. It's far easier to keep the vehicle moving if it's safe, because then you've got the momentum to get onto the roundabout and you've got, it's just easier. Okay, so in the slipstream, so this, you're now here. This, this vehicle here is now there. By the time you get to there, the vehicle is there. You get to the roundabout and even as the vehicle's here, you start to move on. Don't wait until the vehicle's fully gone because you're reducing your chances of getting on. Obviously, there's nothing else in the slipstream. Then just keep moving into their slipstream. Now, if you've ridden a bike, push a bike, you've done this. If you're on a motorbike, yeah, you've definitely done this. You've gone in their slipstream. And that's one of the key ways to get on. So don't panic. Keep calm, look early, analyse the roundabout, take deep breaths if you need to, and then fit into the slipstream. Right, so that's the slipstream uh, of things. Now, the more experience you get, like anything, the easier this will become, because you'll get the practice, you'll get the experience. I've said if you've already got um, experience with um, bikes, push bikes, whatever, then you've already done this sort of thing, I would have thought. Uh, so that's your going in the slipstream. Another thing is when you come to a roundabout, you've normally, unless you've got traffic lights on there, you've normally just got giveaway lines. That's what these broken lines, they're saying you don't have to stop, you just have to give way. Now the reason I'm saying that is you can creep onto the roundabout. So if you've got lots of vehicles here coming on the roundabout, quite busy, and you're trying to get across, then if you wait back here, quite away from the giveaway line, you're reducing your chances of getting across. And what I mean is like running a race. You don't want to give everybody a head start. You want to get, if anything, onto the roundabout. Now, what do you mean on the roundabout? I don't mean push your way on and then stop vehicles, but you can creep onto the roundabout a little bit. And obviously, it depends on the size of the roundabout, but quite often with roundabouts, you can creep on a little bit. Nothing wrong with that. So it's a win-win-win if you creep on. What I mean is you can usually see better if you creep on a little bit. You've got less ground to cover as well. And sometimes when you're just creeping onto the roundabout, there's the last vehicle. Sometimes you can just keep moving on. But if you have to stop, that's fine. But you can actually stop onto the roundabout a little bit, as long as you don't impede the other traffic and get in the way. I know people do do that. They use their size and they bully their way on. I'm not saying that, but just creep onto the roundabout. So that's another thing. I can understand people's reluctance to go onto the roundabout, a little bit nervous, but with experience, that's what, that's what drivers do. You'll see them creep on and on and on to the roundabout. Just be careful. The next thing to consider is for some reason, just say there's lots of traffic coming this way and you're trying to get straight ahead. If there's lots and lots of traffic up here, then you're going to be there for ages. You're looking for a blocker. Now you're thinking, well, what I mean by a blocker or what is meant by a blocker is, if you see here, this is a bus or a large vehicle. So what happens is if the bus 
or the any vehicle, but this, I'm just using a, a bus, it could be a car, but a vehicle is there, then what that's doing, if you can see across the roundabout, that's blocking these. So when they've gone, thank you very much, the bus is now blocking that car, you can come on to the roundabout. So you can use that vehicle as a blocker. Um, the trouble with small roundabouts, mini roundabouts, is you can see too much. Now, what I mean by that, on a big roundabout, everything is set back. On a small roundabout, it's a bit claustrophobic, everything's a bit close. You can see too much. And sometimes you've probably sat there as a passenger or yourself. Nobody moves because everybody's waiting for everybody else to go because you can just see the vehicles are all on top of you. So it's a little bit more tricky with mini roundabouts in, in the sense of that there's a lot of traffic there. Everybody's waiting for everybody else. Uh, so that's it in terms of observation, early observation and planning. Uh, I hope that helped. That's just, uh, so just to recap, just look early. Keep calm is one of the key things. Don't, if you start panicking, forget where you're going, then obviously, ever so difficult. Just remember where you're going, keep calm, and then approach in second, look early, round you go, or fit into a vehicle slipstream, that's fine, um, and then you can use your blocker to get round. Very quick, very simple, but that's in essence what you do, and as you get more practice, then you'll be able to come up, make those decisions quicker. You'll have better control, and then your observation will be better, it'll be easier. But that should help you um, just get round the roundabout a little bit more efficiently. Okay, thanks for watching.